Okay, so it looks like we're doing this. I think I'll title this uh, American Christian Lies Exposed. Or no, no, no. I'll just title this Christianity Causes Dark Ages. <clears throat> <clears throat> this is the claim that by Bill Maher who said, well, who we know is a historian, a great historian, went to college for history. Well, no, um, everybody knows that. He's a stand-up comedian that got his own talk show on the main movie. Religious, I actually like religious, even though it's got some inaccurate stuff in there. <clears throat> the one thing that's very shocking, when Christ he said when Christianity took over, we call that the Dark Ages. Sorry, my brain just almost exploded from the just the the, the blatant stupidity of this. Because I, I don't think he's <clears throat> he's actually purposely lying. I think he actually believes this garbage. Um, let's look at this claim. Rome legalized Christianity under Constantine. Legalized it. Then we had. Um, from the legalization of Rome, and what uh, Edict of Milan was in 313, and uh, Theodosius was in um, like three. I want to say 370. I think it's actually 381 or 391 or something. So you have at least. Let's just. Let's just even take the furthest extreme. Let's just say 60 years. So you take, you take uh, when the time that <clears throat> the, the Roman Emperor actually embraces Christianity, um, well, that's just the tolerance of it. Let's just even shorten this more. The time from uh, when actually Constantine became a Christian, <clears throat> when we know he actually was believing in Christian, not from when he was baptized, he was baptized on his deathbed by an Arian, but he did that for practical reasons, um, until the time after Julian the Apostate when the, the when the Roman Emperor said, screw it, no, we're making Christianity a state religion, we're not having any more persecutions. Um, it's about 60 years, right? 60 years? I know it's more. I know it's, you know it's more. I know. I know. I'm just doing this for anybody who is any type of skeptic at all and wants to reduce things down to the minimal amount of time. Uh, so that's in the late 4th century, right, where it actually is established as Christian, as, as, as the, the Roman Empire is Christian, even though it already was majority Christian long before that. Because Christianity became a fad after Constantine. And that's when the church had to change stuff, because now everybody was to be Christian. It wasn't, you're not hiding out in, in some catacomb or some rat hole trying to escape the Romans, uh, or the pagan Romans, I mean. From that time to 410, the Roman Empire, civilization, the works of Plato, Aristotle, uh, aqueducts, everything like this. What comes through? A group of, a mixed group of heretics called Arians um, and pagans, this mixed group. Uh, let's just put it at the Visigoths. I wouldn't even go to the Vandals right now. Um, Visigoths come through, sack Rome. The uh, 410 is when uh, the Roman army pulls out of Britain. And then it slowly retracts into basically nothing. Well, what happens in this time in the West? Even though Christianity is a ruling force, the only place that Christianity was really a ruling force anymore was the Byzantine Empire, which was the Roman Empire of the East, and very sophisticated, and did not fall into the Dark Ages. You could say it fell into its own Dark Age for about 100 years, but that was just like a lull, like a massive depression where it was getting bombarded by, because uh, it had it la its lands in North Africa taken away from it by fanatical Muslims. Um, but let's look at the West. Britain was, the Britons were still kind of, you know, Christian or, or Celtic, or just peaceful farmers. You have the Anglo-Saxons come in and cause the Dark Ages in Britain. And they were fierce pagans. 
and they didn't get Christianized, even if you ask an Anglican when the Anglican Church started, they won't say it's when uh, Constantine became Christian. They'll say in the year 800 because the people who were living in mud huts and eating dog, the Anglo-Saxons, which came over and st just started causing genocide, um, which is where we get the modern-day borders of Wales for, uh, they were pagan, and they didn't get Christianized until 800. And it was still Orthodox until 1066, until William the Bastard took it over at the Battle of Hastings, and it became, he became William the Conqueror. Let's look at, let's look at what we call modern-day France right now. Modern-day France, or just the area of modern-day France, was a Roman province, sometimes called Gaul. Gaul also could be applied to the Iberian Peninsula, what is now Spain and Portugal. Um, I, why did I say Portugal? It's Portugal. Um, well, were there any French people in France at the time when it was Christian and Roman? No, because the French are the Franks, who came in wielding the Franciscus. That's how they got their name. Saxons got their name by wielding the Saax, um, or sometimes around Saax. Uh, they came in, destroyed, raped, murdered, killed, cut down all the ac aqueducts, destroyed the aqueducts, um, uh, burnt books, uh, raided monasteries that were actually copying Plato and Seneca and all these things, burned all that stuff whenever they could get their hands on it. Did not have a written language. People who ate roasted dog and lived in mud huts. Uh, who didn't carve any stone, didn't build anything, um, basically prehistoric, but not Stone Age, came through, destroyed almost every remnant of civilization, anything of civilization they could, then it wasn't until Clovis that they became Christianized. Italy. Italy still had some holdouts from the Byzantines, so there was still some civilization there. Kind of, there was kind of always civilization there at some point, uh, getting propped up even under Justinian. Justinian, when there was, you know, he was actually trying to take back the Roman Empire, and the Rome, ancient Rome, still existed in the uh, in the East. Well over a hundred years, I mean, almost two hundred years almost 200 years after the West just, boom, dark and night came over it. The Lombards came in. What did they do? They destroyed the aqueducts. They murdered anybody who was anybody who seemed Roman, which was, one of the signs was Christian, um, could read, uh, killed them, were bloodthirsty pagans that loved just torturing people for the fun of it. And, uh, I mean, just, they, they destroyed any semblance of civilization. And uh, it took a while for them to Christianize. Us, where they were probably one of the bloodiest groups of pagans. All this time that Rome, it, it, it's when, it's when uh, the pagans took over. Not when the Christian, because the dark. Why didn't the, if if Christianity caused the Dark Ages, why didn't the Dark Ages affect any anything that was continually Christian? Now they became re-Christianized, and it was a completely different civilization. And most people, you know, there are people who couldn't read, uh, and actually the monasteries were the only places that Plato and Seneca and you know all the these people were copying down. The the monks actually copied down more than the Bible. They actually preserved the written language, and it was only through Christianity that they started coming out of the Dark Ages, because then people could make alliances. You could have common law. Um, but then let's look at what hindered the development, the rise back up from the mud, from the primordial, primeval sludge. You know what happened? Let's see. Right when people are starting to pick themselves up, when Charles Martel is fighting off um, the Muslims and actually holding England, hold, not holding England, holding Europe, pushing the Muslim armies back into Spain, 
finally getting up. Um, what do we see when when these places are starting at least starting to become Christian? Britain is starting to become Christian. There's monasteries there, and the Anglo-Saxons are finally just leaving the Christians alone, even though it wasn't officially Christian yet. It was still it was majority Christian. You had monks that were copying a lot more than the Bible down. You see violent marauders from basically the same place that the Anglo-Saxons came from hundreds of years before that. But around 750, we see the Vikings come in. What do they do? Burn books, destroy any semblance of civilization, steal and leave. Have no want to build civilization at all. They're actually anti-civilization. They actually destroy the progress of Western Europe to try to get back on its feet. It's not until the 11th and 12th centuries that the Vikings start becoming civilized, having kingdoms, written language, roads. Um, and oh my gosh, what, what was the catalyst? Was it Christian? I think it's when they became Christians. These are undisputed. Now, whether you like Christianity or not, you can actually just, even if you're an atheist that hates Christianity, you can see, oh, well, there was structural function. Even if you want to say, there were, it doesn't work today in superstition today, you still have to look back on and say, well, there was a structural functional uh, form to Christianity, to, to the Christian church that actually enabled these places to build up. Because then you're going to, if you don't say that and you're an atheist, then you'd have to say, well, God did it. Because fantastically, as soon as these people become Christian, they have a written language, civilization, uh, codified laws. So, did Christianity cause the Dark Ages, or was it the pagans? Now, all this time, all this is happening, and there's one area that's been continually Christian, the Eastern Roman Empire, with running water, aqueducts, Huge stone buildings, marvels of, of, of architectural feet like Hagia Sophia. But no, Christianity caused the Dark Ages. Let's go with that one. Let's, not, let's ignore hundreds and hundreds of years of history and all the archaeological information and all the historical information. Let's ignore all that, but because the view of people can look back on like the 12th century and say, hey, that wasn't as advanced as the Roman Empire... Well, what was the what what caused the fall of the Roman Empire? Was it Christianity or was it Germanic barbarians from the north destroying aqueducts, Rome roads, any semblance of civilization, uh, killing all the sen killing any senators or any people like that, uh, burning books? Now you can fast forward to the extreme future, to a thousand years in the future after the Spanish have finally kicked. Uh, the Muslims out in 1492 when the Reconquista was completed and say, oh, well, look, the Christians were persecuting people under the under uh, the Spanish Inquisition, which every person who was who was ever put to death had a trial. Sometimes these trials went on for years and years and years. And they weren't really going after witches like a popular thing where they they were going after people who they thought were either Jews or Muslims because it was the Jews that actually worked with the Muslims in Southern Spain. This is not an indictment on all Jews by any, by any stretch of the imagination. I don't want people thinking that. But the, there were people who came in at, that came in with the Arab armies who were Jewish who were actually put over the Christians and taxed them heavily. So when... From, from beginning with El Cid all the way to the Reconquista with Ferdinand and Isabella, uh, you have people who, these people who are like, wait, these people are our enemies and we're our oppressors. Let's find out who these are. Because many of the Jews melded back, they just melded into Roman Catholicism, which is what Spain, Spain has, crypto-Jews. So you look at that and you say, oh, Christians were so narrow-minded. It took a thousand years barbarian invasions, Islamic invasions, to cause this climate. But, you know what, it really should be blamed on Christianity, because when Christianity gets in power, it just burns books and kills people. Even though the exact opposite happened everywhere when 
the Edict of Tolerance was issued in the Edict of, the Edict of Milan in 313 that the Christians preserved every single one of the works of the pagans, even if it was only to refute them. We know a lot about even the people who didn't like the Christians, because the Christians, the, the apologists would copy down their argument and then then in, interject, well, this paragraph's wrong because of this. You can see he misunderstood this thing, and dissecting their thing. It's called apologetics. Um, Justin Martyr, I mean, even St. Augustine used Platonic thought. We used Plato to uh, to show out his, his things, you know? People accuse him of being Neoplatonist. And then the charge that, oh, uh, well, the Muslims actually preserved Aristotle and not the Christians. Holy God. This is one thing. Where do you think the Muslims got it from? Was it the Byzantine Greek-speaking empire? Or did the Muslims, did Aristotle fall from the heavens to the Muslims? It's not like they took over the Alexandria, which was a huge Christian stronghold. Basically, the most populous Christian place, even throughout the worst persecutions under the Roman Empire, and became the chief seat where actually the first time somebody was called Pope was the Patriarch of Alexandria. It was Athanasius, the Patriarch of Alexandria, that was the champion of the day at Nicaea. Copying all this stuff. And if you want to say Hypatia, um, if you think Hypatia existed, but you don't think Jesus existed, you're not being historical. There's no weight of history here. I actually even had to make a video about Hypatia because people are so stupid. Well, I, the Christians killed Hypatia. Well, if you're using basically the bare minimal historical standards where you have Hypatia existing over a 130 year span, uh, who's apparently married to different people and then sometimes celibate and sometimes a virgin and then sometimes has a bunch of kids and all this kind of stuff. Um, we have accounts spanning over 130 years, none of them agreeing with each other. None of them agree in any, basically almost in any aspect. Um, <laughs> take that. But, and it has all this supernatural stuff going on in it uh, against, uh, you know, things like the four Gospels, Tacitus, Celsus, Pliny, Paul, uh, Peter. I mean, it, people, I think people think the Bible was, was is one, the New Testament's one book. It was all written by the same group of people. Even Bart Ehrman and the harsh critics say these were a bunch of uh, disparate sources of Christianity that were from all over different places. This is the argument that atheists make. These came from all over different places. People didn't even know each other or have the same theology that were right in the Gospels or any of these letters. And some of the letters of Paul are only attributed to Paul. They came from different places. These are all accounts of Christ and early Christianity that all wind up lining. They, they in our view, they line up in the New Testament, but um. And then you have all the archaeology that goes with that. You have no archaeology that talks about Hypatia at all, or that even alludes to anything in any of the accounts of Hypatia. And again, this stuff was written, even if you take the farthest critical view of when texts were written, which now with the Gospel of John, the Gospel of Mark, you can't get outside of the first century, because we already have copies of them from the first century, um, and full, complete copies of them from the late second century and early third Hypatia, uh, the early copy of that writing was from, uh, oh yeah, 1677 is the oldest manuscript copy of what we have of her. So um, Hypatia existed, even though there's almost no manuscript evidence, and even if you want to take that as all things, it was written over between a 130-year span. Now, I'm not talking about anything was written at her. No, people agreed, no, this was all disparate stuff. The earliest stuff being wrote about her was decades after um, apparently this stuff happened to her and nobody talks about her getting murdered by Christians and it. people blame Cyril even though Cyril's not indicted under it. There's this, oh God, I could go into all this stuff. I know people like to say Cyril and he's the one that did it. And, I mean, there's a book about that that they have they have um, Cyril passing out uh, shells, from mollusk shells, to slice Hypatia up, and he passed them out like communion. Show me an account of where this happened. I want to. I want to find it. I want you to. Anybody who who thinks that Cyril passed out these mollusk shells to slice her up into ribbons, where does this come from? Where, where does this come? Oh, it came from a historical fiction novel that was written a few years ago. 
that that's actually a literary embellishment by somebody who who wants to believe, wants to think that Hypatia was an actual character that did all these things and was a was a strong independent woman that did all this. I well, wish she wasn't performing, performing abortions and she didn't, you know, rat out uh, Christians when they were being persecuted to the authorities or, you know, uh, actually uh, harshly try to kill uh, a bunch of slaves because they disagreed with her. No, that's not what she did at all. She was a wise woman who fought for, you know, she was... Uh, so with all this stuff... Is there anybody who can honestly say, well, you know, the Dark Ages were caused by the, caused by Christianity? If, if somebody says that, if anybody believes that, I would love to talk to you. Please find me on Skype. I don't know. We can even record the thing. Let's, let's, what is this? The YouTube, we can do the YouTube uh, thing. The, um, you know, the, the, I don't know. I, I don't even call it party line or something. An old thing that we had here back in like the 90s. But that, that, whatever the YouTube thing, I forget the name of it. The Hangout. Let's do that and we'll talk that Christianity caused the Dark Ages because every bit of historical archaeolog and archaeological evidence falls to, oh, it was actually violent paganism from the barbarians that caused it who were anti-Christians. And that uh, as soon as a civilization, as soon as a society became Christian, it came out of the Dark Ages. Now you can argue that Charles Martel is still in the Dark Ages and that it wasn't till his grandson, Carlos Magnus Charlemagne, or Charles the Great, however you want to say it, who was the son of Pepin the Short, and Pepin the Short was son of Carl, Carlos Magnus, uh, uh, no, Carlos Magnus, uh, Charles Martel, and Charles Martel was uh, Chuck the Hammer. That's basically what his name was, uh, Martel Hammer. Um, but... Uh, Charlemagne was truly a great man. I mean, the, the the Vikings wouldn't set foot on the continent of Europe until he was long dead. And he actually recast an empire called the Holy Roman Empire, even though the Roman Empire was still existing over in Byzantium, uh, from southern Denmark to northern Italy, and actually reestablished civilization. Now you could say, well, the Holy Roman Empire was neither Holy Roman or, you know, that much of an empire or whatever. But, uh... The bringing back of law and civilizations, or actually, the not even bringing it back, starting it up. I mean, hell, when were the Saxons? When was Saxony ever civilized, or even southern Denmark? The Ro the the Romans wouldn't didn't even like crossing the Rhine. All right, take it easy. Um, for all those who believe that Christianity caused the Dark Ages. Um, Wow. Christianity caused Christianity caused the dark age. I mean that you have to be monumentally stupid. Do you, it, for those people who, who believe Christianity caused the dark ages, do you also believe that Abraham Lincoln discovered America when he came over to Jamestown on the Mayflower? Do those fa do, does that sentence seem fine? Abraham Lincoln Dis discovered the Americas when he came over on the Mayflower and landed in Jamestown in 1776. Because that's probably more sane to say that than the, uh, Christianity caused the Dark Ages. Or the time that when Christianity ruled, we called it the Dark Ages. No, that's when Christianity had no power and was being almost as badly persecuted by the pagans as it was under Diocletian. Oh, and what brought Christian? What brought civilization back? Was it the Catholic Church? And I'm not a Catholic. I'm the Roman. I'm not a Western Catholic. Um, but you have to give credit where credit's due. Take it easy. Peace to you. May God subserve you in Syria.